So in this is what mountain bike, big budget bike test, we looked at a range of bikes in the thousand pounds or less category, which also ties into around $1,500. The Marin Nail Trail 9.6, the Specialized Rock Hopper Expert, Claude Butler Alpina 2.8, Caliber Boss Nut, and 13 Incline Gamma. One thing we noticed when selecting these bikes is that there's actually not that much difference between a lot of them. Most of them are sort of quite cross-country orientated in terms of spec. Most of them are now running a 1x2x10 speed drivetrain and most of them have an air sprung fork. But really there weren't too many surprises. A bigger surprise was the fact there wasn't such a big change over our sub-750 group of bikes. Okay, as Tom said, you're getting, now getting 2x10 transmissions. Most of them have air sprung forks, but there wasn't a grand leap ahead in terms of the componentry that you get it fitted to them. That is with one exception, because uh, we've actually managed to squeeze one full suspension bike into this category. That's the Calibre Boss Nut from Outdoor Mega Chain Go Outdoors. In this price range, there are a number of full suspension options out there, but really the only reason why I went for the Boss Nut is that it represents really good value for money. And, you know, looking at the spec sheets when we're starting to look at the test, this one stood out as one which had great geometry and good kit. The Boss Nut was also interesting because it's basically a bike from a new brand. It is a real surprise that uh, basically an outdoor sporting goods chain, uh, they've only done two mountain bikes before, and they've come up with a bike that's uh, fighting out with the likes of Marin and Specialized. It's, it's very impressive. So the stuff that we really want to see at this price point, we really want a 10-speed transmission. If it's 9-speed, it feels like you're, you're losing out a fair bit. We also definitely want air sprung forks. Having a coil fork, it's not really acceptable at this price point. We'd also probably like to see a 15 nut bolt through on the fork as well, just for that added control and, and stiffness you get from that. And perhaps brakes from one of the bigger companies such as SRAM or Shimano. It's also around the price point where uh, small spec mistakes such as overlong stems or poor quality tyres are much less forgivable. At this price point they are mainly hardtails, again obviously aluminium ones for the low weight. To be fair, finding a decent full suspension at this price is pretty tricky, so that's why there's not so many in our test. What is a big surprise over the past few years, uh, fork technology at this price range has got much better. So you're now getting forks that are actually really quite good, such as the RockShox Sector in its many forms. It's got a nice smooth progressive stroke, there's plenty of support and not too much seal friction. Um, it's also a fork that won't wear out after like three or four rides. They're, they're pretty tough units. The other thing we've noticed is the increase in quality of drivetrains. We would now expect to see a clutch controlled rear mech and this is really handy when you've got a hardtail because it stops the chain slapping around too much and really keeps the gears in check when you're going over rough terrain. So looking at the bikes we had on test then individually, we had the Marin Nail Trail 9.6. What we liked about this one was the single ring setup with an exterior mech and this guided the chain across a Sunrace 11-42 wide range cassette. The thing we didn't quite like though was the racing rough tyres from Schwalbe which are a little bit sketchy when conditions aren't ideal. The specialised rock hopper expert has got a really nicely made hydroformed aluminium frame. However, we had two main issues with it. One, the, uh, the Tetro brakes, a little bit weak, we'd rather see some branded items from SRAM or Shimano there and also the coil sprung fork has no place on a bike costing this much. The 13 incline gamma has a RockShox sector fork which is great and also a SRAM X9 2x10 drivetrain which works really well. However we didn't like the super long stem nor the rather traditional geometry. The Calibre Boss Nut, it's a great little full suspension bike, the spec on it's very good, it's got tubeless ready tyres and rims a decent rear shock and a very good sector front fork. The only real issue that we could find with it is that obviously it comes from Go Outdoors so you might not get the same backup as you would from a local bike shop. The Claude Butler Alpina 2.8 has a pair of Shimano MT15 wheels. These are really solid pair of wheels and it's great to see them on a bike like this. However, the stock handlebars are both harsh and a really weird shape while the Smart Sam tyre should probably not be on a mountain bike. So, those are the bikes. Um, to find out which is the best of them, we'll pass you over to Guy Kesterman, our testament, to see whether you should invest in them. The runner-up in this category is the brand new Marin Nail Trail 9.6, and it's an outstanding bike for the money, and mainly due to some very, very clever and insightful spec that we've not seen from other brands. The most outstanding aspect about the spec of the Marin is the fact that they've created a really good single chainring transmission up front you've got a, an unbranded chain set but it's a solid cold forged piece and it runs a decent you know it runs a good size chain ring for an all-round trail bike the real key to it though is the use of a sunrace 1142 rear cassette which you haven't actually seen before so even if you run the standard xt mech with it you're getting a really good wide range of gears 
without the extra cost and weight of, the, of a front mech and a front shifter. And it gives the bike a really clean contemporary look. You're getting a 100 mil travel RockShox fork with a maxle through axle on it, which again is very rare for the price range. And even though the stem might seem a little long initially and the bar's a little wide, it actually all syncs together really, really well. The front tire is a Schwalbe Racing Ralph in the performance compound, which is one of the harder compounds and not generally a tire we like. But we've managed to pull a hell of a lot of traction and a hell of a lot of composure out of this bike. The harder we ride it, the more we enjoy it. it. We've really pushed it through the trails when we've been filming. The bottom line is this bike has really surprised us because in some ways, in the geometry, etc., on paper, it's not as outstanding as you'd expect. But on the trail, the bike really comes alive and it really makes sense. And it's a really, really outstanding bike in its category. In terms of comparison to the other bikes it's been up against on price, it's got the biggest gap of any of the groups we tested here. Sometimes when we're testing, we get an absolute clear winner. And in this case, it's the uh, Caliber Boss Nut. A bike that would probably win even if it was a hardtail, let alone a full suspension bike, purely on the basis of spec. What brings that spec alive though, is a really, really well-balanced ride feel on the trail. It's a bike you certainly wouldn't know was a thousand pound if you looked at it. I mean, working from front to back, you've got a through axle, maxle, sector fork. You've got a short stem, you've got a wide bar, you've even got lock on grips. We might not agree with the color, but we certainly agree with the fact that those grips are gonna give you a really solid feel on the bike and they aren't gonna slip off as soon as it gets muddy. You've got a smooth welded, well-made alloy frame with a nice low standover height. It's a very contemporary feeling bike. It's got length, it's got a slack head angle, it's got a low bottom bracket. It doesn't feel like a tall, short budget suspension bike, which is what we generally expect under a thousand pounds. The rear suspension, you can pull parallels from some top-end bikes, like the way the linkages react and the way the suspension all interacts. is a very well-proven system, but it's really well balanced. The shock tune that they've chosen works really well in what is a progressive linkage package. It'll take a big drop without worrying about it, and yet it still pedals well. Uh, the shock only has rebound on it, but we never really felt a need to have a compression or lockout lever to make it an enjoyable bike to drag back up climbs, and it's certainly a great bike for charging back down on it. The tyre spec is really good. That's often something that lets down a bike at this price point. You've got WTB front and rear. You've got a Vigilante on the front for the extra grip. On the rear, you've got a B-Line. It's uh, one of the faster rolling tyres in the WTB stable, and it gives the calibre a helping hand when you need to uh, put the power down and get a move on. You can't have everything at this price point. There's no, there's no dropper post is the obvious upgrade to make on this bike, but the brakes are sound. The Shimano-based transmission is absolutely spot on. This bike blows everything else we've ridden out of the water, including bikes that are quite a long way upstream in terms of price. So there you have it. If you're in the market for a hardtail, then the Marin Nail Trail is a superb bike with a really well thought out spec. The really big surprise was the Calibre Boss Nut from Go Outdoors. In fact, it's so good that our previous full suspension at £1,000 benchmark, the Boardman Team FS, um, is actually knocked into the shade by it. It's got more modern geometry, it's got a really taut pedalling feel, uh, and it's also got an absolutely superb spec. It's nice. I might have done a silly face like that, but... Uh, yeah, actually, I'll probably cut that out. Cut that out, please. Cut that out, please. These off-road bikes are really for off-roading. 